Um, so let's uh, rewind a little bit. So I hear the rumor that you guys make a demo. You guys have all these songs and you're mm -hmm. performing and doing all kinds of stuff. And the demo falls into the hands of um, somebody named Dominic. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about Dommy, Dominic. Dommy, Dommy. Tell us about um, Dominic. Basically, <clears throat> yeah, we had about three or four songs and and uh, I recorded like two or three of them and he got a, a friend. Basically what happened is it all is connected to that band, The Killers. The Killers, right. uh, the Killers uh, lawyer, it was just this random guy that looks like James Spader, happened to be at one of our shows. <laughs> that is a lawyer look, by the way. No, he's a, he's an he's a great guy. He's a he's hilarious very guy. But he's, he's, not, he's not weird like He James does look like James Spader, though. Movies. He does look he does like, look like him. Anyway, <laughs> he came to a, an early show, saw the band, and he sent. He just was like, "I really like it. You know, can I get some songs?" And these uh, lawyers are always thinking. Yeah. They're always wanting a piece of the yeah. pie. Yeah, he's don't like five percent. I'll send this yeah, out. Yeah, right. No, but it, it wasn't like that. But he he was cool, and he, and so he sent it out to Dominic, and uh, we got a phone call like I don't know a week later. It was like, "Hey, I want to come see you guys play some songs." And this was even before I had Anthony, yeah, so we sounded like we didn't have our sound right. But right. It was, it was like, "All right, just come it's just out." Just kind of him playing the piano, and so well, I mean, we I had we had drums. We had drums but he, he flew out and we did a little show for him I don't even think it was that great but he, he loved the demo so much and he was like and then I played keyboards and I kind of showed him some other material and he was like, oh, let's do, you know, let's do this. So now, Dominic, is it Dominic Hardesty? Dominic Hardesty. Yeah. He's the guy who sort of, um, I, I don't want to say like found the killers, but he kind of sort of found yeah, the killers. Buddy, him and his buddies, him and his buddies like, yeah, had a record that called Lizard King and they mm -hmm. were kind of the ones that they didn't find them, but they were the ones that kind of like believed in them first and nice. were like, we're going to put our efforts into this band and, you know, and, and obviously it worked. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so they put out the, the, they put out the, they put out the EP and then, um, we toured in England a little bit and started getting a little bit of a fan base there, but we needed to get home to finish a record because we didn't really have a record done. So we came back and then that's when Epic, Epic got interested in the band and they came and saw some shows and were cool with it. And then. It was like, all right, well, let's make a record. So, you know, that was the, that's the story. So amazing yeah. things for you guys, because a super talented band, and then it actually falls into the right hands. It's crazy. Yeah. Which is a great thing. So being a relatively, like, young band, what advice do you give to musicians who want a career? I would say to someone well, else. I'm still trying to get mine going, so I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> all, all I can tell you is that if you know exactly what you really sound like like get feedback from your friends and family and every all those people that say you sound like this they're probably right you know what i mean it's like not the critics so much but it's like i find the biggest mistake is that my friends and bands want to be like radiohead and, and and they write these songs i'm like well it doesn't sound like radiohead it sounds like this but they're like still str they're not they don't know what they actually sound like it's we, like we stress out about trying to sound like something they, else. yeah instead of just doing what comes it's natural it's fine to draw from your influences but you shouldn't like you know well because i read you guys were kind of influenced by like sort of a jammy kind of thing. yeah, yeah no, they, they were they yeah were. i was, they were. Not, <laughs> I, yeah, he was i was never into that anthony anthony, anthony and john i don't the hear rock. that at all you know i hear this amazingly great i call it like sort of almost like the new face of like alternative rock with you know you know that nice like sometimes kind of people editor's vibe you yeah know, like sometimes people think like when they see us live before they know anything about us they think that we're a, a british band yeah no like, you think so i, I, I thought you were that. They, i thought yeah, you were really you know, sometimes they i get that i like, feel like i shows. enunciate enough <laughs> it's just it's not it's not your voice it's, not your just, voice. The no, it's, it's just, just, just the way the music feel. yeah, the feeling it's of that music, dark yeah. kind of feel which yeah. is a good thing it's you like know. a light dark thing or something <laughs> no you know what? very perceptive yeah. Yeah. We, we listen yeah. to uh you know growing up i mean i'm from seattle so you know i was listening to all i mean it was pearl jam all the time for me so yeah you know, even though I got into like my little college hippie phase, I think like the stuff that you grow up listening to from like nine to fourteen is really the stuff that sticks with you even sure. more. So sure. by the time I met him and he was like Mr. Oasis when I met yeah. him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've always been a fan of like the British stuff, like Beatles and classic rock and Beatles and, so, and, yeah. and all so that. Yeah, so it just started becoming more rock and more of that. Well you can definitely hear it. I mean this record has a lot of different textures on it and it's just uh, just a really, really great piece of music.